Hello Pisces, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader. And today Pisces, we are doing the first monthly reading for 2023. Uh, this is the January reading. So I've got your three cards from the Astro Clock. And if you didn't watch your Astro Clock, I suggest that you do so, and I'm gonna link it for you. And as you can see, Pisces, we have the person card that comes in. This is the man card, and we have the road and bird. Now, the, these are neutral cards. They don't really tell us if it is very positive or very challenging. Uh, they are really presenting some kind of dynamic. So what dynamic is that? Well, with the road and bird, we have a couple of possibilities. I think Pisces, the primary way we can look at these cards is to suggest that there is a conversation uh, with this person and um, it helps move things along. And also what's possible is that there's a trip. I think it still goes into the idea of having a conversation with this person. It can be something you do over the phone or by email or by some other means, or it can mean an actual meeting. Um, and so this is where the trip possibility comes in. So the, um, the road here can, as opposed to normally suggesting a parting, which would be if we had it on the right, because of the bird on the right, it can mean that perhaps you were not on the same page and then uh, you can sort of come together again and have a conversation. Maybe this is to clarify things or maybe to get an understanding of something. And like I said, Pisces, these cards are pretty neutral, so they don't really tell us uh, what this is about or what area it is in. The main thing about the person card, whether it's the man or the woman, is that it tends to represent someone who's pretty important for you. So these are your January cards from the Astro Clock, a conversation with this person. We are going to draw a nine card portrait for you and see what more details we get about uh, these three cards. So we have a deeper reading for the, for the month of January. Okay, Pisces, look at these cards. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with these cards. They resonate a lot with your uh, January cards from the Astro Clock. We have the dog in the middle. We have the road that figures again, and we have the anchor in this position, which I think is um, a really supportive message for the idea that I suggested or that I felt was going to be uh, the key thing uh, that you come back on the same page. So the anchor is really good for uh, landing on something, coming to a conclusion, arriving at uh, some place. Um, we do have the snake at the outset here, and the snake would cover you, Pisces. The snake is typically a tricky card, and it can mean that you had been silent, and it can mean that there were issues between you and this person, and there is, like we said, this idea of coming together. So these are supportive cards. Another way we can read the snake is that it does advise you to wait for the other person to come through. The snake is a card of silence and it has to do with going your own way. And so when we see it as your cover card, which is the main advice to you, Pisces, in a portrait, uh, it's the idea that you want to wait for this person to get in touch. And it looks like they do get in touch. We have the dog right in the middle. So this really aligns with the person and we have the anchor. So in this first diagonal, it is very clear, Pisces, that there is a coming together with this person, but that you're not the one who takes the initiative to do that. In the second diagonal, we have the clover, dog, and tower. Now with the dog and tower, I have a clue here that perhaps this person is someone you've known a long time, or this is a situation from a past episode. And it can also refer to someone who's older, um, or perhaps someone who has some kind of influence in some area. I'm not really inclined to see it as someone influential just because the dog is not really an influential type of character. I feel that it's it's more appropriate to see the cards as suggesting a past situation or you know a long-standing situation. Obviously, Pisces, the clover is one of the luckiest cards of the deck. So it's very clear that there is a resolution and there is a positive forward movement with this person. Now looking at the rose, we have the snake key and tower. So the key and tower are a beautiful pair. In, as far as I'm concerned, because both of them have a spiritual aspect. They can bring a bit of mystery, but they also bring a sense of guidance. And with the snake here, it's clear to me, Pisces, that you did actually do the right thing by 
you know, playing it low profile, keeping your distance, keeping silent and waiting for the person to come through. And the key and tower also suggests that things are going to be resolved. It might have been a bit slow or a bit challenging. And also there could have been a few mysteries, like you weren't sure what to, what to do about this person, uh, but the key and tower certainly bring solutions and they bring a lot of insight. I also think, uh, Pisces, that it's possible that you get clarification on the things that you weren't sure about. Uh, the key is about solutions and resolutions and insights. And so it seems like this past situation here um, is going to gain clarity for you. So that is lovely. The uh, ship and road. So we're seeing travel possibilities here, a bit like what we saw with the road and bird. And we have the road in both cards. Uh, so there can be an opportunity to meet with this person physically. Uh, perhaps you travel, they travel, or somehow something brings you together so that you can actually meet. And of course, it doesn't have to be the case, uh, but it is, uh, it is pretty likely with these cards. Another way we can see these cards, Pisces, is that the ship and road, as uh, more or less the road and bird suggest, they point to things moving forward. So there is a path ahead, something opens up. Uh, it's very likely that things were on hold with this person, uh, but right now or in, in January, uh, Pisces, we th see things moving forward. So there is movement, and there is, I would say, positive forward movement. Now, the bottom line is lovely. Um, the clover, as we said, one of the brightest cards of the deck. We have the child, and the child brings a new beginning. And with the anchor, it is a solid step forward. Um, and it is also a sense of security. So I really feel, Pisces, that it is possible to turn the page on the past issues with this person and to be able to step into a new beginning with them. Now, I do still think that it isn't like a new connection altogether because of the tower and because of your uh, Astro Clock cards here. But definitely, you can look forward to a new chapter in these, uh, with these cards. Uh, there is a new beginning. I would say it goes beyond the relationship factor here. It can be a new beginning in January, just across the board in your life, uh, but also within this, uh, this relationship. The snake, ship, and clover is lovely, Pisces. I know you're going to tell me the snake is a bit tricky, but remember the snake is your cover card, so it gives you the advice more than anything else. And the snake can be a really smart card. And when we see it with the ship, it points to the idea of knowing in which direction you're going. Um, it is also about keeping things under your hat. I think things are progressing for you, Pisces, not just in the relationship, but I think across the month in general. And the ship can also bring up your projects, your ambitions, um, your business business, your work, things are moving forward for you. And obviously with the clover, you could be achieving some important goals this month, uh, Pisces. I still think that with the snake, you're keeping some things under your hat for the time being. Now the key dog and child is lovely. Yes, it is lovely in terms of this relationship, but because of this, these direction cards that we're seeing for you in the month, uh, we're seeing some new connections that are possible for you. I think in terms of work and business, this could be uh, new colleagues, new customers, new partners, uh, perhaps new people that you collaborate with. And obviously with the key, it is wonderful because it brings solutions, it brings success, uh, really enables you to open up that potential of yours. Uh, so we're definitely seeing some opportunities and steps forward for you Pisces this month and also in terms of this relationship which is a key element of your month obviously uh, like I said I think we are seeing the possibility to turn the page on a long-standing situation and move into a new chapter now this column here we have the tower road and anchor so again, Pisces, the tower is really the card that tells me that this uh, relationship matter here um, is rooted in the past. These two cards here tell us that a continuation of this past chapter is in view. And with the anchor, there are two ways we can read it in this context. One, we arrive at a positive conclusion, which is what we initially suggested from just looking at these Astro Clock cards. And also when we saw it in the diagonal here and in the bottom row, so this long-standing situation finally arrives at a positive conclusion. And another suggestion from this line is that you keep on doing what you're doing. Obviously, Pisces, you're on the right track. I think this is a key takeaway from your January cards. You are on the right track and you are in process of achieving your goals and you will achieve some pretty big goals or important goals for you this month. These are cards for success. They bring into the picture people they bring into the picture this important relationship, but it goes beyond this. 
we are seeing that your sense of direction and your sense of growth and expansion are on the table, Pisces. We're seeing new opportunities. Uh, we are seeing new connections that open doors and we are seeing positive conclusions to anything that could have been long-standing and um, sort of pending. So these are really bright cards, Pisces. I think that the relationship aspect is clearly in focus through your Astro Clock cards and the central card here. But my feeling is that it is not too personal. It is not too intimate. I think it's a bit uh, broader than that. This person can be, you know, a specific uh, person, like we said, you know, things resolve and things move forward and there's a new opportunity. But in other lines and in different contexts, I feel the dog brings up contacts, uh, you know, colleagues, customers, you know, a bit on the, a bit on the more public kind of picture, if you know what I mean. And this is all part of your growth and your sense of expansion and uh, opportunities that are opening up for you. So Pisces, these are encouraging cards across the board. With a relationship, things move forward and you're able to resolve a long-standing issue. With your life direction, you are heading in a wonderful direction. You are in process of achieving goals and you will arrive uh, to these, um, these places that you're after. We are also seeing that new doors open, new opportunities um, are there for you to take up and also that you are on the right track to achieve all of the above, I have to say. So Pisces, lovely cards. I am uh, really looking forward to your thoughts about this. Keep in mind your snake, you know, maintain this discretion and calm and wait for people to come around and this person to come around and you'll see that things unfold uh, really nicely. So a bit of discretion, caution and patience and you find that things uh, are unfolding in the way that you want. Again, Pisces, let me know how you like these ideas. Let me know how it played out for you. Uh, very best of luck with the month. Thank you for watching as always and until next time, take good care of yourself. Hello Aquarius, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader. And today Aquarius, we are doing the first monthly forecast for 2023, and this is for January. So I have your January Astro Clock cards here. If you didn't watch your Astro Clock yet, I'm gonna link it for you. I encourage you to watch it. And uh, we're gonna draw on top of these three cards, well, not literally on top of them, but in addition to them, a nine card portrait with Titania's cards. So let's revisit these January cards from your Astro Clock. Uh, we have the mountain, bird, and cross. Now both the mountain and bird can suggest the idea of traveling, probably a shorter trip because of the bird. Uh, but it can also point to contact and communication with people abroad or perhaps in a different place from where you are. And the cross is a card that brings a sense of importance to the rest of the line. It suggests that this is an important conversation. It can point to decisions, possibly difficult ones, possibly some sacrifices. And I have to say that with the bird, this kind of um, anxiety in relation to the choices Aquarius is possible for you. Now, another way we can look at the cards is that you're having a bit of difficulty communicating. The um, mountain can suggest the idea of a blockage, Aquarius, and with the cross, there is a bit of heaviness that we're seeing in the cards. So this month, it's gonna be important to try to clarify things and to try to get some things off your chest or you know, to get some clarity so that you can sort of move forward uh, with some things. But like I said, the idea of traveling and contact is um, coming through, and I think that's gonna be the primary way way to look at the cards Aquarius. Now these three cards don't tell us much about where this is happening that's why we draw these additional cards uh, but they can sort of happen you know in any area. So let's go ahead Aquarius and, and draw nine cards with Titania's cards and let's see what more details we get for January. Okay Aquarius look at these cards I'm really impressed with them. We have all three cards from the Astro Clock figuring as well and the nine card portrait. We have the cross in the middle, the bird at the top here, and we have the mountain. So the bird and cross are the two important positions. So this is in a portrait. This is gonna point to the importance of communication. Notice also that we have the letter and the writer, and both of these cards are communication cards as well. We also have the dog, which brings into the picture a person, possibly the fox as well. So with the bird as your top card, Aquarius, it might be on you to get in touch. Uh, the first card is um, the main advice 
from a portrait for the reader, for you. And we also have the bird in the middle of your Astro Clock card. So I'm gonna take this as a pretty strong uh, suggestion that you might wanna um, you know, take some steps to get in touch, reach out, uh, you know, and do what you need to do. The cross in the middle is going to uh, bring the idea of importance to the reading. So what is happening this month is pretty important. These are important communications, uh, contacts, possibly travels. You really need to be on top of this Aquarius. Uh, what you do now can have a bigger impact and you need to be um, in a position to make decisions, to make choices, even if they're tough, you have to move forward with them. And the writer is also a card of initiative and of contact and communication. It is a helpful person, so you're not alone in this Aquarius. You can, you ask the questions and you will get feedback, you will get help, but also the writer emphasizes the idea of moving forward. Forward. So no procrastinating, no waiting. You know, it, it's very clear to me so far from these cards that you need to take initiative. Now in the second diagonal, I'm seeing something pretty significant. The cross and mountain is the same as the child and mountain as far as I'm concerned. And here we have both of them. The combinations, either one, both of them, they tell of a very important new chapter that is in the making for you. Except that at this stage, you might not see to what extent this is significant. Um, so this can be a pretty important turning point for you, um, Aquarius. The, the decisions you make, the contacts, the communications that you're after at this time, um, you know, they are going to have a big implication on your life. So that's probably why we have the cross right in the middle. Uh, it is really trying to draw your attention to this and also why you need to be taking initiative and uh, really being on top of this. Now the bird, dog and mountain. Clearly this brings into the picture a person. The dog is a friend, a colleague, sometimes a sibling, really anyone in your peer group. But just in general also, it can be pretty much anyone except there's a friendship here. And, uh, you know, there can be this traveling element or this contact element with this person. So they come into the picture this month. Now the snake cross and fox is tricky. We have both the snake and fox in your cards. They're figuring together in this line. They have a lot in common. They tend to represent, as a person, someone who is tricky, who lacks transparency, who is possibly deceptive, likely deceptive, and who has their own agenda. Um, and with the cross here, it's very important that you be aware that some people are playing to win. Um, this is about figuring out people's intentions. This is about seeing through them so that you know what to do so that you have the right assessment of them, of the situation, and so that you know who to invest yourself into and whom you don't. And these two cards are clearly bringing into the picture someone you need to be really cautious of in this context. In another sense, these two cards can bring in uh, a bit of a deception here. So either someone plays a trap on you or you know they try to, um, and uh, you know it sort of rocks your boat a little bit. Now, I'm not seeing cards of challenge as such. I'm not seeing that there is a fall or, you know, something, there's a conflict or anything like that. So I do think, Aquarius, that you're able to see through the situation and your, your cards here in this first diagonal are probably going to help you do that because if you're willing to, you know, take steps to understand what's going on, to seek, seek answers, ask questions and do these things, you are going to gain more clarity on the situation and you're going to figure things out. So again, tricky cards, but, uh, you know, if you pay attention, you'll be able to see through, the, through them. Now, the bottom line is a lovely set of cards. Uh, I think this is pretty much the brightest combination apart maybe from the second diagonal. The uh, child, letter, and writer brings news and a wonderful new beginning. This can be an offer. This can be a new contact. Uh, but I do think in general, it's a new opportunity. And clearly to me, Aquarius, this ties into the second diagonal. We have the child in both. And we have this important um, new chapter, sorry, that comes in here in the diagonal. And we see that it is likely brought by this uh, communication here. And this lines up with what we see in here. And actually, you know, the, the mountain and cross is that combination that points to this important 
a new chapter that is in the making for you and the bird is that communication or the green light in a broader sense that enables this. Uh, Aquarius, I wanna say I'm sorry, I have lots of sweet birds around me. I am currently in Thailand and the nature around here is really impressive. And you have these birds that can be so loud. So I'm sorry if they're coming through, but hopefully they bring a bit of a smile to you. Moving on to the columns. So here we have the snake again. We have the bird snake and child. So what I'm seeing here, Aquarius, is that this is not about being silent as much as this is about as you turn into this new beginning, you want to move forward carefully and cautiously. And also, I think the plans that you have in terms of these new opportunities that you're moving into, Aquarius, you need to go about it quietly, more or less, carefully, and also you want to keep things under your hat. So there are things happening for you, Aquarius, new beginnings, important communications, some trips, some people, but I think in general, you want to keep this discreet from other areas of your life. So keep it under your hat, these new beginnings, these new projects, this new beginning that you're moving into. Not everyone needs to know what you're up to. In the second column, we have the dog cross and letter, more contact and communication. And with the cross here in the middle, this is gonna be important. So you have to have that conversation. You have to have that communication. You have to clarify what this is about Aquarius because it has a lot of impact for you, okay? And um, I'm not seeing that this is light. It's looking really important and significant. So these communications, these contacts, I'm, I'm not seeing that it's super friendly and it's fun. No, it's not, it's not that energy at all. Instead, it's a pretty serious set of cards uh, really asking you to focus on the important things on this communication, really giving it a lot of attention and also being discreet about it. Now, the mountain fox and rider, a little bit like the bird, snake, and child because we have these two cards in common, but also because we have two communication cards and we have the mountain and child. They're different, but when we tie them in this diagonal, you know, they're uh, alluding to this chapter, important chapter that you're moving into. So again, there is forward movement, there is contact and communication, there is making decisions and figuring things out, but you need to be discreet about it. So really, you tell only the people who are related to this and then those that are not involved and it's none of their business you don't need to bring it up at this stage things are still forming for you Aquarius this month they're shaping up and um, you're still figuring out the details so it's it's not really ideal to share the whole thing at least with people okay and the fox and rider is another combination for discretion but in both cases and throughout the whole portrait, I can say, whatever this contact and communication that you come through Aquarius, it's important that you do your due diligence. That you make sure that you double check everything. And I say that because of these cards here. If you're not gonna put in the effort, you could fall into a trap. So you can prevent that if you're gonna do your due diligence and you ask the right questions, you seek answers, you uncover the details and you do your homework. Okay, so pay full attention to this because the implications of this are pretty serious on your life and they can really affect your longer term picture and bring in this uh, very important opportunity for you. The, uh, the fox can be a card of work and the, the dog can bring in colleagues, customers, depending on how you operate. Uh, and if that's the case, Aquarius, you could be looking potentially at a new job, but more likely a new project and some new opportunities within uh, your current job. I'm not seeing radical changes. I'm seeing opportunities in the making. So overall, this is a bit of a sensitive month for you, Aquarius. It's an important month. Paying attention is very, very key. Being in contact and communication and following up where you need to is very, very key. And also it's really important that you be aware that some people could be playing to win. There could be some dishonesty or some traps or some misleading information or bits here and there. And you need to do your homework to make sure that you uncover everything. And if you're willing to put in the work 
as I'm describing, then this is potentially a significant opportunity for you. Likely with your work and you know, the, you know, your, your day to day projects or your source of productivity, but it can be in other areas. I have to say Aquarius that in terms of relationships, um, I'm not really seeing a personal relationships element, but in case you feel this could apply for you best, um, then there is an opportunity to turn the page on a situation, but I think moving forward, it remains a bit tricky. Uh, so the, really the snake and fox and also the bird in various combinations, they tell us that it's not really a, a very supportive, kind and genuine and compassionate relationship. No, it tends to be a bit of a, how do I say, a bit of a utilitarian relationship, if you like, like, um, there's like benefits from being in, in contact with this person and uh, perhaps they feel the same way about you. So it makes sense to be clear about this and to manage the expectation on this level. I still think Aquarius that you need to be careful about people's intentions and that you need to be really selective about what you share with others. Your plans for change, these opportunities that are in the making for you, these deeper changes happening, you want to keep those under your hat only on a need to know basis. Uh, you know, do you share it with uh, certain other people? So a bit of a sensitive month, like I said, uh, Aquarius. So be careful across the board, be careful how and with whom you communicate, but you know, follow up and do what you need to do. Do your homework, do your research, uncover anything that is questionable, um, and also work on allowing this opportunity and this deep change uh, to form. Okay, uh, I'm really looking forward to your comments about this. Leave me your thoughts, leave me a couple of comments. Uh, very best of luck with this. And as always, Aquarius, until next time, take very good care of yourself and thank you for watching. Hello Capricorn, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Normal Reader. And today Capricorn, we are doing the first monthly forecast of 2023 and that's for January. So I've got your Astro Clock cards for the month of January. If you didn't watch your Astro Clock, I'm gonna link it and I encourage you to watch it. And we're gonna read an additional nine card portrait to get more details about January. So let's go over these cards. These are really bright cards. We've got the star. This is a wish fulfillment card. And we have the ship, also a beautiful card. It is not as beautifully positive as the star. It's not to, it's not to the same extent about wish fulfillment, but the ship is really encouraging. It is wonderful for travel and adventure. And between the two Capricorn, we have the man. So the man can be just about anyone in your life, but it would represent someone of pretty, uh, signi a pretty significance to you. It can be a colleague, a friend, a family member, your partner, really anyone. But the key is that it's pretty, it's someone pretty important to you. Now, when we see the man between the star and ship, clearly we are looking at um, positive developments with this person. This could be someone who helps you achieve your goals. It could be someone you get together with. Maybe you travel to see him or they travel to see you or somehow there is a, some kind of a get together. Um, and like I said, in general, it points to wonderful progress and uh, the ability to achieve your goals with the help of this person or somehow through him. So let's put these cards aside Capricorn and draw your nine card portrait and see what are the details that we get for these three cards. Of course my deck is always shuffled. I just do a quick um, hand over hand as I get started. Okay Capricorn here are your cards. We have a lot of parallels between these cards and the ones here. We have the woman in the cards, so when I see the two, uh, the idea of an important relationship is clear in the, pick, in the cards. We have the clover, which is very much about wish fulfillment like the star, and we have travel cards. We have the road, the mountain, and the rider. Now, of course, not all of you are gonna be uh, in some kind of trip or are involved with this, uh, but the idea of tr movement and things moving forward is going to be highlighted. Now here's what stands out to me, Capricorn, the fish. The fish is your cover card. And the fish is about money, practical matters, income, business, assets. It tends to point to the financial and practical aspects of your life. 
And when I see it as your cover card, it sounds like this is what's foremost on your mind in January. And it's gonna be key that this person brings to you opportunities in relation to your money, your income, or your other assets, other assets and the practical things in your life. The other thing that stands out, Capricorn, is the mouse in the middle. The mouse is the only challenging card and it figures in the middle. But I have to also say that the mouse is not very challenging. So it's not like the whip, it's not like uh, the coffin. It's not, it's not very dramatic. But if you leave it unchecked, it can grow into something bigger. So let's go ahead and put these cards together and see how they connect with your Astro Clock card. So with the fish, mouse, and ring, it sounds like something that you are committed to because of the ring is a bit of a drag. It can also suggest that you could be getting tired of certain uh, relationships or certain commitments that you're in. They could be draining you, um, you know, energetically, but also with regards to your finances and possibly with regards to your time and other resources. So at this point, Capricorn, you could be assessing how long you're going to be doing this, how long you're going to be committed to this, how long you're going to be putting up with this person. Uh, at the same time, we do have the clover. So whatever you feel is lost or is drained or you're getting tired of, you're going to be able to recover. The mountain, mouse, and woman also brings this up. Uh, the mountain and mouse uh, very directly point to uh, the idea of blockages, speed bumps, uh, you know, issues that you need to get over. And with the woman here, we're seeing that this is in relation to a relationship, just like we saw in the first diagonal. So clearly Capricorn in focus for you this month is a commitment that you have toward a certain friend that could be maybe draining you that you're starting to get tired of. Uh, but with the clover, it looks like you are, you know, you're on the right track with this. And maybe if you be patient a while longer with it, you're going to see some really positive results. And like we said, uh, this person is very supportive and things are progressing really well. Now, the fish rider and woman, this is wonderful news with regards to your money. And I think this is ties, ties in uh, closely with the Astro Clock cards. Uh, there could be income as well. There could be a bonus. There could be uh, a source of income, some uh, money coming in, uh, some good news with regards to your finances and other practical matters uh, coming through this person or with the help of this person. The road mouse and clover is similar, I feel, to the mouse and mountain here. So it's a bit like this speed bump uh, metaphor that we're seeing. But again, because of the clover Capricorn, I feel that you'll be able to overcome this. So it sounds like you are almost to like almost at the tail end of something it's been a stretch and you're still going after things you've been patient it's been a bit of a drag but at this point i think we are close to seeing the turnaround uh, because we have the clover and the beautiful star and ship in here and we have the child so this is a lovely confirmation the child is a card of new beginnings. So again, I felt that you were at the tail end of this stretch. We have the mountain, and actually the mountain and child can point to a very important new beginning for you. Uh, with, the, with the ring, this can point to a new relationship, a new commitment, or a new involvement. Uh, so you're almost done with this phase, Capricorn, and you're about to move into a new beginning. So be patient with the final stretch because it is going to turn into a wonderful new opportunity. Now, the fish with the road and mountain, this can be some traveling that you do. It can be a little bit expensive. You need to spend on it or it can point to a different situation. It can point to investments that you have, pursuing certain financial goals. Maybe you have them in a different location and this is something that you're working through. Again, across all contexts, the good news is coming and positive resolutions are at hand. We're gonna get to this. The rider, mouse and child, again, we're seeing the mouse in here. When it comes to these movement cards, and the relationship aspect in the portrait. Uh, the mouse is sort of slowing you down. It brings a few obstacles, but I'm not seeing Capricorn that this is a reason to be deterred from this new beginning and to give up on what you're doing now. So again, I feel that you are in the final stretches of a bit of a marathon and uh, you are about to turn the page into a new beginning. 
I think you are a little bit drained and a bit stressed from this, but I also think that you know that this is meant to complete and you know that it's gonna open up into a new beginning. And the woman clover and ring is lovely for a relationship and for support through a relationship. And the clover certainly helps bring uh, things to manifestation. They, it helps you achieve your goals and it is also very good for wish fulfillment. So taking these cards together, uh, Capricorn, it looks like you are on the go here. You're pursuing uh, some commitments. You're supporting some friends. You are going after goals. And I think you're getting tired of it. Uh, but uh, uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And you do seem to be in the final stretches of this effort. And uh, this is going to be really good for you for when you turn the page. Um, news about money support with money finances other material aspects of your life are also in the works um, you could feel like you may be overspent or that some things have been wasted but i think these are going to be recovered uh, there's also support from people maybe one or two people and there is good news uh, coming through. Um, I also think that you're gonna recover your energy, you're gonna recover your money or your resources, and you're about to turn the page into a new beginning. And that is gonna be very exciting. I also think Capricorn that it could be a beginning that is more important that you might anticipate right now. So overall Capricorn, there is progress. It might feel like it's been a bit slow or you're tired of things but if you're patient a while longer you're about to turn the page and you will find that you get lots of help and support from people and that what you're turning the page into is going to be very exciting there is progress there is um, good chances that you'll recover whatever had been lost and you'll find yourself in a new beginning i also think that you're in a position to achieve goals and get your wishes fulfilled even if you're maybe not so in the mood for it right now but it is certainly in the works for you through people or uh, through your own effort so very interesting set of cards uh, Capricorn be patient just a bit a bit longer until uh, you wrap this up and you'll be into this new beginning uh, so keep the faith and welcome the new and be open to the opportunities even if you feel like you're too tired to pay attention to this uh, just be open to this because it can prove very good for you people are supportive you support them they come through uh, to support you as well so let me know how it played out for you Capricorn leave me your comments as always I look forward to them very best of luck with this interesting month as you wrap up this bit of a marathon of a stretch uh, here and uh, best of luck with it as always thank you for watching Capricorn and until next time take very good care of yourself Hello Sagittarius and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lunamal Reader. And today we are doing our first monthly forecast for 2023 and this is for January. So Sagittarius, if you didn't watch your annual 2023 Astro Clock, I suggest you go ahead and do this so that it contextualizes the monthly readings better. So we've got your three cards from the Astro Clock for January and it is clear that we have some pretty happy energies here thanks to the Clover. The Clover is one of the luckiest cards and it is figuring right in the middle for you. We also have the Man and Letter. Clearly Sagittarius, this is bringing into the picture news or communication uh, from this person or about this person and obviously the news is really good. Probably answer the wish, gives you the green light, the go ahead, helps you move forward. And it can also reassure you in terms of the relationship that you have here with this person. So very lucky cards across the board. Thing about these cards Sagittarius is that we can't really tell what area of life they figure in. So we're gonna draw a nine card portrait with uh, Titania's cards this time. And we're gonna get more insights and more details about what is ahead for you this month. So let's go ahead and deal out these cards. Okay Sagittarius, obviously some very beautiful cards that we're seeing in here. We're seeing the beautiful letter, 
which is also what we have in the Astro Clock cards. And we have the sun right in the center. We have very beautiful cards. We have the snake and the clouds, and these are challenging cards, but really in view of all of the other strong cards, I think this is going to be undermined and you're gonna be able to overcome whatever issues uh, these two cards bring. Something else that stands out, Sagittarius, is your fish right at the top here. The fish is about money, prosperity, business, enterprise, um, other um, asset-related matters, other practical matters in your life. They're in focus. So what this tells me is that the relationship and the news that we see in your Astro Clock cards are probably more related to your work and your career. At the same time, Sagittarius, I have to say that there are good cards for relationships in a personal way. We have the sun and the moon figuring together and we have the heart. And so in this sense, the fish has to do with attraction tends to be related to the physical aspects of a, of a relationship. So I have to say that it could go both ways or it can apply to both areas. And one more thing is that I'm seeing the moon with the letter and the sun. This uh, row stands out to me because it is very closely related to what we're seeing here and it suggests an offer. And we're gonna get into the details of this. So I think this news, this communication points to an offer, some kind of proposal, and it looks good. So let's go ahead and weave these lines. We have the fish, sun, and bear. These are really good cards for money. They can point to more money, more income, some kind of promotion, a bonus, uh, good stuff happening with your money, with your finances, with your business, other sorts of uh, assets, other uh, practical areas. They're very, very positive. The heart, sun, and clouds is another lovely combination. Um, the heart with the clouds can suggest thinking about love, wondering how the other person feels about you. And on its own, uh, this combination, the heart and clouds, can be a bit challenging because the clouds is not very positive. But we have the sun, and obviously the sun helps clarify the doubts, the issues that are brought by the clouds. So very clearly that the news or the communication really helps to clarify matters. Um, it is, uh, like we said, with the clover, and I really have that that intuition as Sagittarius when I, when I said that uh, the um, clover can sort of reassure you if there was anything going on with this person. And I think this is really well captured in the portrait cards. Now the fish, snake, and clouds can point to financial problems. Uh, there can be some expenses. There can be a sense of being a little overstretched. Maybe some things come up that you didn't expect. Still, because of the beautiful cards here, I think this is part of what you overcome. So you're able to overcome the challenges here. So you're able to overcome the challenges here. And another piece of advice that comes through the snake is to take it easy to take a bit of time to clarify things and also not to jump the gun. So don't make rash decisions, especially when it comes to your finances, your work, your business, and other practical areas of your life, Sagittarius. So take it easy here. Another way we can read these cards is that you wanna keep your thoughts to yourself. Uh, so the snake is very good with silence and secrecy and the clouds is about thoughts. When you have doubts, it's better to wait until you can clarify things and then articulate what you have in mind. Otherwise, if you're gonna speak out and articulate things without having a clear picture, you could miscommunicate and misstep. You can avoid this by sort of backtracking a little bit and thinking about things. And this can apply in every area. Now, the middle row is a beautiful combination here. We have the moon and sun, a very beautiful combination for love actually because of the archetypal masculine and feminine and uh, so it can be associated with that in the same way that the men and women cards would be. It's also really good for collaborations and uh, the moon and letter is a combination of offers and proposals in a very direct way. So obviously this line is pointing to good news, an offer, an invitation, a proposal to collaborate or a proposal in general and it's very uh, beautiful. I really think that it mirrors what we see in your Astro Clock cards. Now the heart tree and bear is beautiful for growth, also good for abundance, a sense of empowerment. Um, it can point to a promotion. Again, I think this would tie in nicely with the other cards. 
But in terms of a, a relationship or some kind of connection here, it's also growing in a beautiful way. And it sounds like this could be pretty serious because of the barren tree, but also because of the moon and sun. Very beautiful card, Sagittarius, really. The fish, moon, and heart is lovely across the board. It's great for an offer of work, of business, income, um, other kinds of offers, and it's also really beautiful in love. Uh, this is very much about the attraction, the chemistry. Uh, there's a lot of um, good vibes here between the two of you. The snake, sun, and tree is also a really good sign. Obviously, with the sun and snake, also the tree and snake, the positive aspects of the snake come through. And you might be wondering, well, does it have any positive aspects? It does, yeah, it, it can point to wisdom and uh, you know, a sense of knowing what you want and things are unfolding. Uh, it might ask you to be a bit indirect. So again, this idea of discretion and calm and silence that comes with this snake is uh, gonna be beneficial for you. Now the clouds letter and bear can be considered a challenging combination, but honestly, because of the beautiful energies here, uh, the clouds is gonna be overcome. Uh, the clouds and letter can suggest news or information or that offer that can muddy things a little bit. Maybe there are some aspects that are unclear. It can also cause you to have to shuffle things around. Maybe you're unprepared for the consequences. But I do think that with the rest of the cards, uh, this is resolved. And remember that we have the sun next to the clouds. We have the clover next to the letter in here and the sun next to the letter in here. So really the issues, the doubts, um, you know, the, the tension possibly and possibly anxiety as well that comes through because of this offer, this contact um, is, is easily resolved. And with the bear, it is important news. Uh, we have the bear and sun as well. So we have these bigger uh, kind of energies for you Sagittarius. So this can be important. This can be an important step up, an important offer. It could be quite a lot of money. It could be, you know, quite significant for you. So it's actually a really exciting time, despite a few challenges here with the snake and clouds. I really think this is more about getting uh, beneath the surface here, uh, understanding things a bit better. Uh, you know, but past that, I think uh, the cards easily overcome uh, these challenges here. So Sagittarius, these are looking uh, really nice. There is an offer that comes through. It is very positive for your money. It is very positive for your relationships or one specific relationships. It does suggest a sense of growth, a sense of depth, and also a sense of fulfillment because we have the sun in the center of everything here. And it can apply to both contexts. I think really these two contexts are the ones that stand out. The money, work, uh, business aspect and the relationship aspect. And of course this man is you know, implied in your work life. Uh, so if it's an offer, or in your personal life if it's this relationship. So a beautiful month at hand, Sagittarius. Remember to not jump the gun. Remember to think things through and to be calm and allow things to unfold because they are unfolding in a very beautiful way and you should land on both feet. Let me know how you like these ideas, Sagittarius. Leave me your comments as always. I look forward to reading them. Until next time, thank you for watching and take good care of yourself. Hello Scorpio, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Renormal Reader. And Scorpio, we are doing your first forecast uh, for the year. This is January in 2023. If you didn't watch your 2023 Astro Clock, I suggest you go ahead and watch it because it helps you put things into context. So Scorpio, we have the three cards from the Astro Clock and these are for January. And it's looking exciting this month. We have the Stork, which sets things into motion, and we have the Cross. So this can add a sense of importance to the changes or the activity uh, that is indicated by the Stork. And we have the Garden. Now the Garden can bring in a certain group of people, your community, uh, possibly the job, some kind of environment that you're part of. So these cards together are telling us that there could be some important changes that you're making within a certain environment, at work, or within a community, or socially uh, with your network of people. And the cross here can also suggest that you need to make a decision. And I have to say, Scorpio, the cross can bring a bit of challenges in the sense that 
Um, the issues that it's about tend to be heavier, more important, weightier. So the, the decision or the changes that you're making could be important here and so you're carrying uh, the responsibility for this at this, at this time. Uh, so the cards are general in the sense that they don't really tell us what area of your life this is figuring in. That's why we're doing a nine card portrait and I've got uh, Titania's cards here and we're going to draw a nine card portrait to get more insights into your month. So let's go ahead and deal out your cards. Okay, Scorpio, here is your nine card portrait and I am uh, pretty impressed with the cards that are showing up here. We have the garden in the first position. We also have the stork. So we have two of the cards that are showing up in the portrait. And immediately what I'm seeing, Scorpio, is also a relationship factor, not only through the garden twice, but also through the woman and the ring. And uh, what is uh, apparent to me just from looking at these cards is that you could be moving on from certain relationships. And I have to say, Scorpio, that they're not commitments or involvements. I think they're really bringing up certain people in your life. And you're making changes and you're leaving or they're leaving. Uh, there is a parting of sorts. But I also have to add, uh, Scorpio, that, that we have the clover in the cards. And um, even if it's a bit challenging because of the cross, it sounds like you're welcoming the new and you're open to the change. Uh, so that is uh, beneficial. So let's read these cards together. The garden, coffin, and child. This is a very clear combination of a beginning and an ending. I always see this pair as a door closing and a door opening. You know, the new and the ending is happening back to back. And with the garden here, we see it in the context of a community or an environment or a place that you're part of. Uh, the garden is your cover card. So it seems to be, uh, you know, this environment or this community seems to be pretty significant. Now in the second diagonal we have another clear message, obviously with a coffin in common to both lines and to most lines it's going to carry a lot of importance. Uh, we have a, a relationship clearly coming into the picture, the woman and the ring. And between them, we find the coffin. Uh, clearly, this is an ending, a parting, a, a completion also is possible. And uh, it is in relation to this person. Now, it doesn't have to be a breakup as such, Scorpio. It can be, for example, a partnership completes or you've uh, arrived to a goal, you've achieved what you set out to achieve, so it's, you know, now you, you can go off in your separate ways and do something new, which is what we're seeing here. But in other cases, it might uh, be a parting of sorts. But again, Scorpio, I'm not seeing challenging cards. Instead, I'm seeing the clover and happy cards and the stork and child, you know, they help bring a sense of uh, renewal and um, enthusiasm. The uh, garden, clover, and ring. So in this sense, uh, this can be uh, the community that you wear part of. So this is what's in question, right? Because the garden is your first card. And the clover and ring suggest that you've had a really good time here or you've uh, done a, lo a lot of good things. I also think there's a lot of support and understanding. And so when it comes to change, you're going to get this support. The clover is also a card that asks us not to worry, you know, it has, um, it has a protective uh, energy. And so sometimes we, you know, we're worried about whether we should do something or not. And the clover tends to support us. And obviously with the coffin and the change cards and the, you know, the road and stork and child, we're talking about making a change and ending something. And so I really feel, uh, Scorpio, that the clover and the cross, they help you do that. Uh, we also see this in, in this row. The anchor and coffin and stork has um, something a bit more final. The anchor is a card of, uh, you know, that secures things and it, it's strong and heavy. And so when I see it with certain cards or certain combinations, it does point to the idea of making things happen, sticking with the decision. In this line, we're seeing a certainty of uh, closing and moving on. Now, often I like to see the anchor um, at, on the other side of this, like it has like a final kind of securing and closing, but honestly, both ways will work. And also because the coffin is so central, the message is clear. The um, stork also helps set things into motion. Uh, so Scorpio, it's possible that you were waiting 
to make the move or you were waiting for the right time or for some reason it was on hold other changes were on hold uh, and now we see that they can pick up and you can move on and make these changes. So very exciting. And in the bottom row, another clear message of a change with the road and the child here brings into the picture this new beginning. Now with the woman, it clearly reflects the changes in the relationship. She could be going somewhere. She could be making her changes as you can as well, Scorpio. So it sounds like there's a natural parting here. Uh, again, I'm not seeing drama and pain and breakups and things like that. We're seeing like a conclusion, a completion, uh, something that is ending and now it's time to turn the page into a new beginning. And so it affects all parties equally. And that's what I'm seeing in the cards. And that's what I'm seeing in the cards. The uh, garden anchor and woman, again, I'm seeing something similar to what we saw in the top row. It, it does suggest that your experience or your time in this place has been supportive. Um, I also think that other people support this person. There's like mutual support. So again, I'm seeing that the changes that are about to happen are natural and positive and encouraged. We're not seeing this energy of breakups and you know things falling apart and things like that, not at all. We're seeing uh, mutual support, encouragement to change, encouragement to move in a new direction. So very lovely. The clover uh, coffin and road. So here's another good one, the end of the road uh, with the coffin and road and clover obviously bringing uh, this idea that it is meant to be, it's the right time for this uh, and encouraging this completion and conclusion. And finally we have the ring, stork and child, yet another new, uh, yet, yet another combination of something new and with the ring here it can point to new beginnings, to new relationships, uh, to new involvements, uh, just in general and it is a very exciting combination. Uh, so Scorpio overall it's time for change this month uh, and it's really nice that you start off the year with these changes. Uh, so things are being shuffled around. Uh, there are changes within a place, away from a place, moving on from a place, um, completing certain things and uh, really moving on in a new direction. This affects you, this affects others in this environment, uh, but we're seeing that there is a mutual support through this change, that it is the right time for it, that it is meant to be, and that it comes with uh, new beginnings and uh, exciting uh, things ahead. Um, another interesting aspect of your cards is that even though it is really focused in relationships, it can be at work or at home or in another social um, you know, environment for you. Uh, the garden is really uh, the card that represents that and the, the relationship cards can follow uh, follow along. Uh, but the dynamics are very clear, Scorpio. It's a time for endings and new beginnings. So don't hang on. Uh, this is a natural change. There is all around support for this, uh, probably more than you anticipate. Uh, so let go and move on and embrace this wonderful new beginning that is really well timed with the beginning of the year. Let me know how you enjoyed these ideas, Scorpio. I'm looking forward to your thoughts and comments as always. Very best of luck with it. And until next time, thank you for watching and take good care of yourself. Hello Libra, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader. And today Libra, we are doing our first monthly forecast for 2023 and that's for January. If you didn't watch your annual Astro Clock, I suggest you go ahead and do because it helps uh, contextualize the reading. So we've got these three cards from the Astro Clock uh, for January and they are, they are pretty supportive cards. We do have the flowers, but we also have the clouds and mouse uh, Libra so it is going to muddy things a little bit. Now what I'm seeing here is that it is a bit of a psychological situation here where your optimism is maybe a little bit dampened. You could have some doubts or some issues that you're working through. You could be hesitating or having uh, concerns that could be slowing you down a little bit. Now on the flip side it might be a good thing Libra to check in with a few items. Maybe you need to double check things. Maybe you need to clarify your intentions. Maybe you need to understand what's going on beneath the surface a bit better and that is going to help you uh, make an informed action, an informed choice or whatever else we're going to see coming up in the cards. The flowers can bring up the idea of creativity and I feel with the clouds and mouse 
assuming that's an area for you, um, it can be causing you to doubt yourself a little bit. The flowers is a very bright card, so maybe you don't have to you know, doubt and hesitate uh, to this extent. It might be a good time to be cautious, but also not to question yourself like in a negative way, uh, Libra. So let's put these cards aside and draw a nine card portrait. I have Titania's cards here, and the portrait's gonna give us a lot more details, and we'll see what this is about and what more is ahead for you for January. So let's go ahead and deal out these cards. Okay, Libra, these are exciting cards. We have lots of beautiful cards in here. In fact, all of them are beautiful. And I know you're gonna tell me, oh, the scythe. Well, the scythe is neutral. You know, it can be challenging, but it can be a uh, positive depending on surrounding cards. All of these cards are positive or neutral, um, but we are seeing the clover right in the middle and the clover is one of the luckiest cards of the deck. Uh, what's interesting is that the clover and clouds and you know, it sort of jumps out to me because both of them are the middle cards. It is a specific indication to avoid doubting yourself. And I really felt that this came through just from looking at the Astro Clock cards. We have the moon as your cover card. And again, this can be a combination, sorry, a card of creativity. And we are seeing changes. And especially with the scythe and tree and the ship and scythe, we're seeing changes and the idea of swiftly moving into action. So the scythe is a swift card and it is very much in contrast to the wobbliness and the hesitation and the doubt that we're seeing here. So I really feel Libra that this month is an opportunity to stop wobbling, to stop hesitating, to give yourself some room to express and experiment, to express your creativity to go ahead with your projects and do these exciting things uh, that you have in mind. Uh, it sounds like you have to try, you know, it sounds like instead of maybe overthinking or over planning, uh, you know, it sounds like you're past that phase and you can now give it a try. Uh, the uh, cards also bring up the dog and the garden and possibly the writer in terms of people, uh, but we are seeing a sense of growth and expression and you know moving forward with these uh, plans and projects and ideas that you have. So let's weave these cards together. With the moon, clover, and tree, I really feel, Libra, that you could be appreciated, that you are on the right track and that you need to bloom. You know, the, the tree is about blooming and growth. And with the um, uh, moon and clover here, you need to really give yourself room to do this. So I think this is a confirmation that what you have in mind needs to be implemented. So go ahead and move forward with it. At the same time, the tree can be a bit slower, although really the scythe is going to challenge that. And uh, I, I do think that it is, you know, you need to build on what you've done. So again, you're on the right track. The rider and ship, well, here we go. These are direction cards. You know, they, they point to going in a certain direction and going after goals and ambitions. Uh, the ship is uh, potentially about going beyond your comfort zone because it has to do with exploring and, you know, going a little bit beyond the familiar. And with the rider and clover, we're seeing another, um, I, you know, a similar idea of this, um, you know, going after goals and traveling in a certain direction. Obviously with the clover, you're on the right track. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing and actually maybe do more of it. Um, like we said, you could be holding yourself back. Maybe you shouldn't. The moon, fish and ship. These are great cards for work and business and projects. Are you going in business for yourself, Libra? Are you trying to, um, you know, to start a venture? or some kind of project that could get you money, uh, well, it is certainly well starred here. So, you know, you, you should do that. The, um, the fish and ship can also bring up the idea of a trip, um, possibly a trip that you have to spend on. The fish can, can suggest that it's a bit expensive, but I'm not seeing that it, it's problematic in this sense. So I really feel this is more about your ambitions, possibly some trips and, um, ventures, uh, but very much about your projects and the idea of them bearing fruit, whether this is directly in terms of money or in other nice ways. Now the dog clover and scythe, I appreciate this combination. This can bring up uh, a lucky break and help from someone. So it might surprise you, Libra, that some people come through to support you and to give you a hand or to give you ideas and inspiration. And honestly, when I saw the moon as your cover card, I felt that maybe 
you know you are more appreciated than you might think or your ideas were are going to be uh, better well received that you might have in mind again with the clouds and mouse I'm really seeing the sense that you could be doubting yourself unnecessarily and then we have the rider garden and tree this is another combination that tells us that you're on the right track so build on what you've already completed um, what you've you know the seeds you have sown let them bloom nurture them you know really allow your um, you know your projects and these ideas to come to fruition uh, these are also good cards for uh, the social aspect of things the garden uh, suggests a community or a niche or a market even and with the writer entry, you really want to find your way in it, take your time building your presence in it, uh, your connections in it, and it sounds like it's going to bear fruit as well. Uh, again, here's another nice combination for appreciation and support. We have the dog and rider. Clearly, this is uh, someone who comes to your help. Uh, with the moon, they could bring you an offer or they could support you. They really, you know, uh, have support. And uh, I would say even compassion towards you, uh, Libra. So, you know, so they, they've got you. They're really there with you. You might also be the one who reaches out to people. And this lines up with what we saw here. So it's really about you going out into the world, Libra, sharing what you've got, putting it out there, uh, getting feedback. You know, it's like, um, it's like you could be selling something or sharing your creativity in one way or another. Uh, and it sounds like it's going to be pretty well received. Uh, the fish, clover, and... Um, Garden are another suggestion for this. Uh, really good results in this environment, um, possibly financial results. Clearly things are bearing fruit. And again, with the clover, um, you could be in for more luck than you might anticipate. Again, we're seeing that sense of doubt that you need to overcome. And the fish scythe entry is really going to kick you off in a new direction. So we saw a few times that you need to keep on building on what you're doing, but I think this is going to tip over into some kind of change. So this can uh, move you to change the way you do things. This uh, success that you find in this environment could push you to pursue even bigger ambitions or to make even bigger changes. And what I'm thinking, Libra, is that one scenario that could apply for some of you, and I appreciate this might not be the most common scenario, is that Perhaps you start a business or you start a project, uh, you know, and it, it affects it affects your life in a bigger way. It causes you to make changes. It might cause you to uh, maybe change your mind about the job, for example. Uh, that's one way we can look at things. But in another sense, uh, Libra, it's possible that you um, that we're looking at uh, relationships. You know, we have the dog and the garden and the writer. And even though we have the fish, it can still point to good things happening with people. Uh, again, I'm seeing support. And uh, it's possible that you might have had doubts about some people. You're wondering about how they feel about you. But again, I see that they come through and you get support. Now, in this sense, there can be, again, changes uh, with regards to the direction that you move into. Um, but because of the positive energies in the other cards, I think the direction is an exciting one and one that actually uh, builds on your successes, even if it causes changes. You know? So I am seeing that you have support and specifically, I think you have support to pursue your projects. I really think that's how the two areas uh, come together through your cards. So the key thing to take away for you, Libra, this month is overcoming your doubts and having more faith in yourself and your abilities than you could be uh, giving yourself credit for. You do want to put your stuff out there, go out into the world, share what you've got to share, and you're probably going to find that it comes back to you in a very positive way. You get good feedback and it's going to probably push you into uh, even uh, more adventures ahead. Another thing that I could add is that maybe traveling is, is something that's happening for you. And it can also mean physical changes in that sense. You could be moving places. You could be changing where you work or changing where you're based. And you could be pursuing some trips or adventures as a result or in parallel. We could also be looking at that. In that sense, there could be a bit of a cost involved, possibly. I, I would think uh, that would be a natural way to interpret the fish in this context. Uh, but again, Libra, it is looking exciting and it is meant to be. So be willing to change. 
um, you know, give yourself a bit more credit than you are right now. Overcome your doubts and embrace the changes that are ahead and you'll find the support and the, the beautiful outcomes that come through. Let me know what you make of these ideas. I'm looking forward to your comments as always. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take good care of yourself. Hello Virgo, welcome back to the channel and thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Normal Reader. And today Virgo, we are doing your January forecast. That is January, 2023. If you didn't watch your annual Astro Clock for 2023, then I suggest you go ahead and watch it so that you have a good context for the year. So these three cards are from your Astro Clock and they are for January. And these are some really nice cards Virgo. They bring in a lot of power, uh, empowerment, wealth potentially, income, and uh, it seems to be focused on your career, your practical affairs, and with the bear, a sense of empowerment. So taking each card in turn, we have the fish, which is a card of money, the bear, which is about strength and empowerment. It really makes everything big and important. And we also have the lily, which is mainly about your life path and your career. So these cards together very much bring into focus the idea of work, money, your finances, your sense of independence. You could be looking at going into business for yourself. You could also be looking at some legal matters. Sometimes the bear and lily can suggest uh, things that are related to the law or some kind of administration. And in this sense, the fish here would suggest that it has to do with your finances or assets or your, uh, you know, the the broader practical aspects in your life. Uh, so it's definitely a time to take care of these things, to be on top of them. Uh, in terms of work, you could be looking at some kind of growth and empowerment. We could be looking at something like a promotion. Uh, really, any way you look at these cards, especially in the context of money and work, they're looking really, really good. And like I said, Virgo, maybe you're looking at striking out on your own, becoming more independent, uh, doing something uh, you know that could bring in more money, and make you feel more empowered as you pursue uh, your goals. Uh, another thing is that the lily is sometimes read as health. And in this sense, Virgo, we could be looking at a lot of energy, uh, a lot of stamina, a sense of strength. Sometimes the bear can bring in the idea of appetite and weight and the fish can bring in anything that's related to liquid. You know, so in this sense, you could be looking at maybe improving your circulation, improving your cardio, maybe drinking more water, uh, you know, managing your appetite and things like that. But I think in general, you have quite a bit of energy and I really feel that it's not so much about health. I think it's more about your money and your work. So with this uh, said, Virgo, let's draw a nine card portrait. I've got Titania's cards here and we're going to get more insights into your month uh, with this uh, portrait. These are an additional nine cards. Okay, Virgo, look at these cards. We've got the bear right in the middle of your portrait and this obviously mirrors the bear that we have in your Astro Clock cards. So this really emphasizes the idea of strength and empowerment, especially that in both layouts in both lines or readings that comes in the central position. So there is a, a big focus on your sense of growth and empowerment and uh, you know that sense of being dominant. So if you're up against competition for example or if you're up to a task or there is something that you need to prove yourself in then definitely bring it all out uh, Virgo and show your strength and show what you're made of. It's definitely an opportunity to do that. The other cards in your portrait bring in relationships We've got the dog, the garden, and the heart, and also the rider. And there are some movement cards, the stork and the ship. Now the clouds is a little bit challenging. It's not very dramatic, but it does bring into the picture the idea of thoughts and thinking. And you could be maybe confused about certain things or needing to straighten out uh, certain ideas. The dog is your cover card and the dog is a friendly card. So it's in this position, it's not so much about relationships, but it's more about your attitude towards others. And it really advises you to be friendly, to be a good team player, uh, you know, to play ball as it were. But in this first diagonal, Virgo, we have it with uh, the bear and uh, the clouds here. So you could be up against competition, uh, especially since the clouds is a little bit challenging and you need to prove yourself. This could be a test. It could be a challenge. Uh, it could be some kind of task or a project where you're going to uh, show your strength. 
In the second diagonal, the cross can really bring in this idea of a test uh, because the cross is about choices, sometimes sacrifices, you know, it's about life and destiny, so you could be put uh, to the test. And with the rider and bear, it is certainly an invitation to go for this and to really come through uh, Virgo. Now, of course, there are other ways we can read the cards. You could be working through a challenge. You need to figure things out. And in the second diagonal, you could be looking at your path or your direction. And with the cross here, you could be making some decisions. And I think with the bear, these are big decisions. And really, when we look at your astro clock cards, Virgo, you know, with the bear and Lily, there, these are some big steps in your life. You know, these are some big milestones, uh, you know, some big um, areas that you're going through. Now, the dog, garden, and cross can be an important meeting uh, that you have. Uh, and so you want to be up to this again uh, Virgo really living up to the expectations living up to the environment or the challenge or you know this environment where you're going to try to show yourself through so make sure you show up and then the stork bear and heart is actually really positive for growth and empowerment and I think things can happen in a way that make you happy uh, you could come through, you could show your strength, you could be appreciated for this. Uh, so don't back down, Virgo. Really come through, uh, give it your best, put in the effort, and you'll be happy that you did. And in the bottom row, we have the two uh, travel cards together, the rider and ship. And with the clouds, there can be some issues here, some speed bumps, um, you know, little problems here and there that you need to deal with. Uh, but I also think more generally, in light of everything else, Virgo, you could be looking at your direction. Uh, again, uh, going back into these choices that you're making. So you could be at crossroads or you could be at an important junction in your life where you are put to the test and you, may, you need to make some decisions about how you move forward. Uh, but really, there's a lot of positive messages as well, Virgo. Uh, the dog, stork, and rider is really good with people. You could get help. You could get uh, news, the green light. Uh, you know, you could get the motivation uh, to move forward, to move into this. With the garden, bear, and ship, this is an important trip or an important meeting, important ventures, projects, uh, meet, uh, get togethers. Um, the bear can bring into the picture people of authority and of influence. And with the garden, maybe this is a circle, uh, you know, uh, with higher ups, for example, managers, people of influence, wealthy people, sponsors, you know, people like that. And so it sounds like, Virgo, you are in an opportunity here to meet some of these people and to make an impression. So again, make sure you're up to it, live up to the expectation, polish up your image, polish up your act, because you could come through here with uh, some progress. And in the last column, we have the cross heart and clouds. This can cause a bit of confusion. You could be having a bit of self-doubt here, Virgo, especially with the clouds and heart. Uh, and again, I think this is part of what's gonna put you to the test. So really, it's a test of courage, a test of strength, and so you really wanna be aligned. If you're having doubts, you know, that's fine. Maybe they're based in something realistic. Check in with yourself, see if you can improve something. If there's feedback, take it in, assimilate it, and see what you make of it. Uh, you know, so it's not just external. There is also an internal, mental, psychological component at play here. Now, I do think this is mainly about you in a certain environment, in a certain um, niche or a part of the market where you are showing your strengths uh, through Virgo, but it is possible that the cards are a bit more focused on a personal matter. Now, I think that the Astro Clock cards are not really about that, but we do find an element of, the, of this in the portrait cards. We have the dog and the heart and the garden, and because of the clouds and the heart, you could be wondering if the other person feels the same way about you, or you could be wondering how others feel about you, maybe some people or a specific person, and maybe that could cause you a bit of doubt or, you know, you, like you're interested in knowing how they feel about you. But I really think the clouds is not, you know, the energy of the clouds is not dominant in the portrait. It is an, um, an important position, I would say, where there's a meeting of several lines, including the main diagonal, but it's still a lot of positive cards in the rest of the portrait. So in general, Virgo, what I'm seeing for you this month is that 
it's going to call for your courage and your strength. Um, there can be some involvements and meetings and um, opportunities that you need to face up to, to be there for. You could be put to the test in something. You will need to show through. And uh, I think you do come through. There can be some bumps, but I think in general you come through. And so make sure you're up to the image, you're up to the performance, you know, you try to, uh, you know, make a good impression and have confidence in yourself. And also you could be making some important decisions with regards to your work, your career, your finances. Uh, and again, apart from these few bumps here and there, I think you show through mainly because we have the bear in central positions in both uh, layouts. So that could be a pretty exciting month for you, uh, Virgo. It could be, you know, it could feel like a lot. You could feel like there's a lot on your shoulders. Um, don't be intimidated, you know, do your part and, and live up to this and, you know, put yourself out there and I'm sure uh, you're going to get some positive feedback and definitely some steps forward. And if there is some challenge, uh, you know, that's fine. It's probably part of the testing thing and also, uh, you know, it's part of your growth. So do what you need to do, Virgo. Put yourself out there. You've got what it takes and uh, you're going to come through. So let me know what this was specifically about for you, Virgo. I'm really interested to know if you were put to the test in some way or you know what this uh, situation that demanded so much strength from you is about i'd love your comments best of luck with this virgo and until next time as always thank you for watching and take very good care of yourself hello leo welcome back to the channel and thank you as always for tuning back in if you're new here welcome i'm leila the normal reader and today leo we are doing the monthly forecast for january so i have here your january cards from the astro clock if you didn't watch your astro clock go ahead and watch it so that you have a good context for the year overall so with these cards leo we are seeing a relationship coming into the picture we have the man the bear and the heart and this bear here can suggest that the relationship is deep and loving it can be something like the big love, for example. Uh, but the bear can also suggest that this relationship is important. It can also suggest that the man is someone important, someone wealthy, someone powerful, or someone who is really supportive. And with the heart, this is really good news. As it stands with these cards, this is a supportive and caring uh, relationship that we're seeing here for you, Leo. Now, it can represent you, uh, but in this case, again, the idea of being supportive, um, you know, and having someone's back uh, is suggested. So let's go ahead and draw a nine card portrait. I've got Titanus cards here. And let's draw uh, nine cards in addition to these three to see what else we get for you in January. So we'll have a better indication about what these three cards are about, as well as other suggestions for the month. Okay, Leo, here is your set of nine cards. Uh, we do have the bear that figures again in the cards. And so this mirrors what we see in your Astro Clock cards. And we have the really interesting snake as your first card. So I find that this is quite an interesting message. We also have the mouse that's a little bit challenging. But we do have the star and the clover. And these are two of the brightest cards of the deck. So it's looking very positive overall. We also have the book, which is curious here, and the tower. So I feel that there could be something from the past that is unraveling. And it looks like really positive progress. And I think it's really focused on this relationship, uh, which we see in your Astro Clock cards. The rider in the middle is really about progress. Uh, it points to news and messengers, uh, but it is also about getting help and getting support. And so this is where I felt that, you know, this man is a, is a supportive person and the relationship in general is really supportive. Now, what's interesting is when we have the snake with these cards here, and mainly the snake as your cover card, there is a suggestion for you, Leo, not to do anything about the relationship. Uh, so the snake is silent, it is patient, it is, um, you know, it sort of waits and it observes. So it's very good at observing and it knows exactly what it wants. And so when we see the snake as your cover card here, it gives you this kind of advice. Uh, so there is this idea that things are in progress and things are unfolding. 
uh, with the tower this can mean they have been unfolding over some time or that they will over some time and so the card here asks for patience uh, the idea is not to try to force things you know don't try to be pushy things are unfolding even if they take a bit of time uh, that is fine we have a similar suggestion in the second diagonal and that's really interesting we have the book along with the writer and tree. So we have parallels between the two diagonals. Both the tree and the tower, they unfold over time, they're slower, and both the snake and the book are silent, secretive cards. So there seems to be something that is unfolding, Leo. Maybe uh, it's about you being patient, and also it can mean that you're about to uncover some information or some secret or something is about to come through but you need to be patient for it to unfold so this is probably going to be a slower month and uh, you're going to need to be patient and it's a very good idea to let things be you know let them unfold now the snake bear and tree is a lot of growth and empowerment uh, the bear and tree are both strongly rooted cards you know they stand their ground they're also about growth and strength and vitality and so you could be moving into a place of empowerment some kind of growth but again leo the suggestion with your snake is to really allow things to unfold and of course, if the bear is in reference to this man, then the snake certainly advises you to be diplomatic and careful. Uh, really know your boundaries with this person or a few other people of this kind of character. And that would be a really good thing for the relationship. I also think you're able to get what you want from this person. Uh, you get their support, you know, their the green light or their backing. Uh, but again, with the snake, the idea here is not to be pushy at all. Let them come around. The star rider and mouse is achieving goals and wish fulfillment. Uh, the thing about the mouse is that there are a few obstacles or little speed bumps as you move towards your goals, but I think that is okay. Uh, the mouse is small in comparison to the star, and the rider encourages you to keep moving forward. If the mouse suggests you slow down a little bit, that is fine, but you are on your way to achieving some big goals here. And the book Clover and Tower is really a beautiful combination. Uh, Leo, you're in for a long patch of good luck. Uh, again, there is that mystery element through the book, a bit like the snake. Things are unfolding in the way that they're meant to be. So if you are in a bit of a mystery here or you're not sure where things are heading, just hang in there a little bit because things are unfolding. So the cards are asking you for trust, really. Star, Clover, and Tower could all be asking you for trust. And then the tower, bear, and tree are slower. So it's sort of a transition, but things are unfolding in the way that they're meant to be. So just hang in there and I guess enjoy the unfolding. The snake star and book is lovely. I really think here, Leo, you could come uh, through some interesting information, probably information that you're gonna keep under your hat. Uh, but again, there is this idea of having to be patient because both the book and snake are secret silent cards. Uh, but we have the stars, so you're probably going to come through some lovely information or some really good news or some wonderful support. And we do see that you could really get your wishes come through and achieve some important goals. Same here. Bear, Rider, and Clover. Lovely achievement. Very good news. Lots of support. And I think it's on a bigger scale. I mean, you know, the star, the tower, the bear, they're kind of bigger cards and we have the bear twice. So really this person comes through with support um, and you're able to achieve your goals on a bigger scale. Uh, you know, so it's looking really good. I think the only thing is that it's taking a bit more time and it's a bit tricky and you know, you need to, you know, let it go and let things unfold. And I think in this line here with the mouse between the tree and tower, you could be losing a bit of patience, Leo. Um, again, I'm not sure you can do much about this. And in fact, it's in your best interest to, you know, to let it go. Uh, but it might try your patience a little bit about how slowly things are unfolding or how slowly this person is coming through and 
uh, how slowly you're moving towards your goals but it is in process it is on the right track you know so try to relax a little bit um, you know keep observing and watching what's going on but I really don't suggest that you try to force anything do what you need to do but be calm and cautious and discreet and you know sort of chill you know things are unfolding so overall Leo these are some really nice cards for your goals you could achieve some big objectives um, even if it takes a bit of time for you to get there it is in process uh, you have someone's support in order to get this support Leo again the suggestion is really to be calm and uh, relax and really letting things go and allowing this person to come through on their own time it might try your patience a little bit but you know it's okay things are in process and heading uh, in the dire direction that you want and if you come through some information uh, Leo I'm going to suggest that discretion is really key at this uh, at this point remember the snake says that silence is golden okay so listen more than you speak and observe and see that things are actually unfolding in your best interest so very best of luck with this Leo let me know who this person turned out to be let me know what you need to be silent and careful with I'd really love to know leave me a comment or two and as always very best of luck with the month and until next time thank you for watching hello cancer welcome back to the channel and thank you as always for tuning back in if you're new here welcome I'm Leila the Lenormand reader and today cancer we are looking at your January forecast if you didn't watch your 2023 astro clock I suggest you do that these three cards are from the astro clock for the month of January so cancer what do we have here we have the lily tower and book honestly these are really good cards for education for learning uh, they're also really good for publishing and for teaching and writing and research uh, we have the book and tower together which are about higher education uh, knowledge and expertise you know becoming more specialized and the lily is often associated with your career path and uh, your lifetime kind of picture and with the tower we certainly have this idea of longevity uh, so we're seeing here the idea of becoming more specialized more experienced uh, you know and more knowledgeable in certain areas and it's definitely good advice cancer to pursue uh, you know some refinements to improve your skills uh, maybe to go deeper in a certain topic or a certain area that you specialize in um, the cards can also bring up the idea of going back to a past chapter uh, having to unravel something about the past uh, the book is closed and it is at the end of the three cards so maybe this thing is still hanging I, I really think that the idea of your career and your long-term development your growth is highlighted but it is possible that there is an issue that is still uh, pending or unresolved and you want to get into it a bit more deeply so let's draw a nine card portrait to add more insights to these three cards and also to have additional suggestions for your month of January Cancer just uh, shuffling a little bit and ready to deal them out okay Cancer so here is your nine card portrait notice that we have the book in the middle here we also have the bear and tree and you know they have a similar energy to the lily and tower slower more rooted uh, you know unfolding over time we have the man that comes into the picture and that's interesting because the lily is sometimes associated with a man an older more mature more experienced man it's the king of uh, spades um, so there could be a person of significance uh, that is in focus for you this month cancer but really the book in the middle is interesting I do think because of the mouse at the end here you know I'm not sure things are 100% revealed but with the scythe it does break open the book so there can be some revelation or something that comes through uh, but the mouse is going to add a bit of an issue here this said we have the clover the tree the house the anchor these are all supportive and bright cards of course the clover is the brightest one in this sense now the bear as your cover card cancer demands that you be strong 
and you uh, live up to the expectations, your own expectations, stand behind yourself, um, you know, come up to something and don't back down. Uh, with the book and mouse, there can be here some misinformation, something misleading, something missing. Uh, there could be gaps. And so what you need to do is you need to close these gaps. So it's time to research, to dig in and to find out more. And so this aligns with this idea of researching and going more deeply into matters. In the second diagonal, we have the house, the book and anchor. So the book and anchor is about certainty, having the right facts, having the right information. And the book and house can often refer to something like a classroom, a library, and some kind of place where you research or you know where there's information. And of course it can refer to your home or your, your team on the job and other such environments. Um, but the idea here is that you need to double check the facts. Okay, so if that means you look into, uh, you know, you, you do some reading, you do some research, you ask someone maybe, someone expert, you know, you wanna do that. You wanna double check the facts. And remember, these are, this is about closing some gaps. And also, if within a certain environment, whether it's home, your team on the job, or some other uh, environment, uh, you want to maintain uh, some silence here, Cancer, at least until you know what's going on. Okay, so uh, the, the book is, it, it has that element of silence, and with the anchor, it's important to double check the facts. Now, the bear clover and anchor is a lovely line. It really is about a positive conclusion, arriving to the right conclusion. So it looks like your research and you're not you're studying here or your whichever way you're digging into the situation, it is going to pay off. I also think um, uh, cancer that it's important that you don't back down, don't compromise your position, don't compromise yourself. Yes, you need to double check the facts, but it doesn't mean that you know you are shortchanged in any way. And also, these cards are really good for achieving goals and for getting what you want. Uh, so these are lovely cards for you and your sense of empowerment, Leo. Now the tree, book, and man is uh, a couple of possibilities here. Uh, the tree and book is another combination for knowledge and uh, you know becoming more specialized or seeking information. It's also very good with personal growth and sense of personal development. Now the book in man would typically point to someone you do not yet know. And so with the tree here, there could be a relationship that you are, that is unfolding. So you're getting to know this person. Um, and in this sense, it's important to take your time. We are seeing a slower energy across the month. Uh, in another sense, Leo, it's possible that this person could be keeping something. So again, this is where we see the possibility of breakthroughs or uh, gaps and misinformation or something that is misleading. So it's possible that this person is withholding some information or maybe they're a bit of a tough nut to crack, you know, or maybe they're, maybe they don't mean it. Maybe they don't have uh, all that confidence in themselves and they're not, you know, they're not communicating clearly. But the thing about the tree, Leo, is that you don't want to, you don't want to be pushy. I mean, you want to be there, you know, and maybe encourage them, but I'm not saying that you need to be pushy. I think they're going to come through on their own and there is going to be a revelation or at least some additional information that is shared. In the bottom row, we have a challenging combination. We have the house, the scythe, and the mouse. And these two together, they point to removing something. Now, in the... Um, on the flip side, this could be a good thing because it can mean that whatever was in the way, whatever was, uh, you know, the negative element or the unhelpful element, it can be found and removed. Uh, so this can, you know, I'm, I'm feeling taking all of these cards together, uh, Cancer, I feel that this month is really about getting to the bottom of something. It's like you're doing a root cause analysis you're digging into the details, you're finding out what is going on here, and it may be for the purpose of figuring out what is the root cause of an issue, and it sounds like you will find it out, and you'll be able to extract it and remove it, and uh, that's gonna bring more clarity to the whole situation. I also think that it could be in relation to a person, someone who is not really communicating well or they could be withholding some facts or you know they could be misleading whether they mean it or not 
and uh, it is about you know straightening this out and finding out what the uh, issue is. Now the bear tree and house is a calm and supportive combination that supports you to stick with what you're doing, to give things time, and also to be of support. So I realize this person could be a bit of a maybe potentially difficult person, not really cooperating. Um, but you know, it, it doesn't mean that you, you want to be too forceful. And we saw this line T crossing the central row where we suggested that this person is probably going to come through. They're a bit of a wobbly character, but they do come through. Uh, so again, do your part to be of support and to be there. Um, they're similar a little bit to the lily and tower. There's that sense of being rooted, having a strong foundation and growing uh, out of this. So it sounds, uh, Cancer, like you are the mature one. You're the one who needs to be of support. Um, there is an issue that you're trying to get to the bottom of, and you will. Uh, it involves another person whom you need to sort of work with to try to get it out. They're a bit, you know, they seem to be a bit difficult, but it's okay. It does come through. It does come through. The Clover book and Scythe is very strong in this sense. The Scythe and book helps break things open. With the Clover, there can be a breakthrough. So again, I feel that you do find out, you do um, get a, a, an understanding of what's going on. It can be a breakthrough. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the information comes through. There is understanding. Now, the anchor man and mouse is also a little bit challenging because the mouse suggests that this person, you know, it's, it's not someone you can trust 100%. And with the anchor, you know, which would normally point to a supportive person, it's not really the case with the mouse at the end. Instead, I feel that with this person, you need to be more clear. You need to set some clearer boundaries. It sounds like you need to... Uh, handhold them a little bit if you know what I mean you know you need to be very clear with them because otherwise it becomes gray and you know they don't really know what they're doing so so be patient with this person but once you get to the bottom of this issue you know be clear cancer about how they should be how they should be part of this how they should operate how they should communicate because um, yeah, I don't think they really get it 100% and you have to show them the way a bit more clearly. But overall, it's a, it's a month when you get to the bottom of things, Cancer. You're able to find things out. It's going to take a bit of patience, a lot of maturity on your part. It's also a good learning experience, I have to say. It's not like you're not getting anything out of this. You're growing and becoming more expert. It's also possible that you are promoted or you know you're a manager or a leader uh, in this situation whether it's in the job or in some other area uh, cancer and and you need to do a bit of hand holding here okay you get to the bottom of the issue you need to find it out it might be a bit tricky or it might try your patience a little bit as you do and it involves this person who is you know not not really cooperative and also not on the ball 100 percent so in the process you show them the way and you know you might need to create a bit more of a clearer boundary, a bit more, maybe some instructions to help them, you know, be, uh, be better with this. So let me know what you make of these ideas, uh, Cancer. They're certainly kind of unique. Uh, let me know who this person is. What is this issue that you're trying to, to analyze? What is this, you know, the root cause that you're trying to dig out here? Uh, I'd love it if you can share a little bit of that. As always, best of luck with the month and until next time, thank you for watching and take very good care of yourself. Hello Gemini, welcome back to the channel and thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader. And today Gemini, we are doing your January forecast, January 2023 that is. If you didn't watch your 2023 annual Astro Clock, then do go ahead and watch that so that you have the big picture of the year uh, in front of you. And so these cards Gemini are from your Astro Clock for the month of January. So what do we have for you this month? We have the rider and the mountain and the ring. So the rider and mountain can suggest the idea of traveling and with the ring here, you could have someone in that location whom you're connecting with. They could also be the one who uh, is traveling to you. Uh, but if there's no traveling as such for you, Gemini, this can be about getting in touch and reaching out. 
You could also be looking at expanding your connections, going beyond you know, your current location uh, to maybe broaden your network, to reach out and make contacts. So that can figure in any area of your life, Gemini. We're gonna draw nine cards from Titania's cards here uh, to get a portrait and add to uh, what is ahead for you this January. I just wanna suggest that we, because of the rider, it's a good idea to take initiative and to reach out. And even if at first you, you know, things seem a little bit stuck, because the mountain can sometimes suggest blockages and things not really moving, uh, you stick with that a little bit, Gemini, and on the other side, you'll be able to get in touch and reach out and make contacts. It might just be that uh, it's taking a bit of time, especially if this is a new place or an area you haven't been into before. So let's put these aside, Gemini, and let's draw your nine card portrait and see what more we have for you this month, what additional insights we have for uh, these cards. Okay, Gemini, so here is your nine card portrait, and I'm seeing a lot of cards in common with the Astro Clock cards uh, in terms of the energies and the meanings that we, we have in here. We have relationships very clearly in the cards. We have the dog that covers you, but we also have the woman. We have the communication cards like uh, the bird, and we have travel cards like the ship and stork. So there's a lot of parallels between the cards in your portrait and the cards in your astro clock. Now the ship and stork is one of those uh, standout combinations for me. It suggests the idea of traveling, of going somewhere. It can even suggest moving, like moving countries and things like that. And maybe with the, you know, with these cards in here as well, you could be looking at having a foothold abroad, if not moving outright. Now, obviously, Gemini, this is not a very common thing, so it's not likely to be the main uh, takeaway from your cards. But perhaps for some of you, uh, you could be moving into, you know, a whole new chapter or making a big move or a big change in some area of your life. Now to back up a little bit, we've got the dog as your cover card. And as your cover card, the dog really advises you to be friendly, uh, to be open to people, to be a good friend, to be a good team player. It really highlights the social aspect for you this month. And with the ship and stork, if it's not about traveling and big moves like we suggested, it certainly is about expanding your horizons, uh, taking the extra mile, discovering new places, new people, uh, you know, pushing the envelope as it were. And obviously this works really well with what we suggested in your astro clock cards. So we're getting a confirmation of that. Now with the coffin ship and woman, we have a specific a person that comes into the picture can be represented by the ring because the ring tends to be about one-on-one -on -one connections. And so here, someone could be leaving or perhaps it's about getting in touch with someone who's been away or who's been absent, who's in a different place. Uh, you know, the coffin and mountain, they can suggest this idea of someone who is away, who is absent. And so maybe at this time, Gemini, there's an opportunity to reconnect, uh, to get in touch. And again, I'm seeing, you know, with the dog as your first card, with the rider in here, you know, there is a, a good suggestion for you to take initiative to reach out, maybe catch up uh, with contacts, catch up with uh, things that are pending with people here and elsewhere. And if there's someone who'd been out of touch or away for some time, it might be a good time to reconnect and find out what this person is up to. Now, the dog tree and woman is a supportive relationship. This could be an unfolding uh, relationship, you know, still in the work, still in the making. And you know, with the coffin here and maybe the, with the mountain that sort of blocks things a little bit, it could be a suggestion, Gemini, to take your time getting to know this person and you know, giving them room, uh, you know, to get comfortable in the relationship. I have to say that I do think your cards are mainly geared towards work, but you know, the ring can bring in personal relationships. So it might depend on your specific uh, scenario, Gemini. Now the uh, bird and the ship and key, that's another combination for traveling. We have lots of travel cards. The bird, ship, stork, rider, and mountain. Lots of them. So you could actually be taking a trip 
or maybe you have things to do you know so the burden shift can mean that you have errands to run things to look after uh, you could like we said also be exploring opportunities and options maybe this asks you to network you know it's it's like really about going out there and seeking answers and the key is great in here Gemini because the key is lovely for getting answers for finding solutions getting good ideas getting insights so this is really a month for you to explore to expand to talk to people to find out what you can do find out more discover new opportunities and I'm sure you're gonna find that you get lots of good feedback and lots of good ideas that come through so be a little bit adventurous a uh, Gemini so that you can you know expose yourself to new possibilities now the bottom row is quite powerful there is the coffin bear and stork and the coffin is typically a card of endings and with the bear this can be a major ending and with the stork this can be a change so something could be coming to a close and there is also a suggestion with the bear uh, Gemini that uh, suggests that maybe you need to bring some things to a close so really putting in the work to close it off and then once it's closed off you sort of go off um, you know in, in these directions that we're seeing here so this can be about tying loose ends uh, closing chapters you know anything that's still pending you want to close it off uh, because it looks like there's an opportunity for making changes here and it sounds like you don't want to you know move forward too much in these changes these travels these trips these adventures while you have a lot of open things that are still pending you know it's better to close some things off and to clear your plate a little bit as it were so that you can move into these new uh, exciting projects and possibilities now the dog bird and coffin this can suggest uh, Gemini someone who'd been out of touch and obviously with the coffin tying into the woman here in this diagonal it can be that you were out of touch with some people or some people were out of touch it sort of was a lull in the communication and it sounds like this is what needs to pick up at this stage you know in this month you sort of want to pick up where you left things that were not finished uh, conversations that were still hanging or someone who'd been out of touch it's a good idea to come back to this and pick it up again the tree ship and bear is lovely for growth this is also a growth phase and obviously this is about your growth and expansion and also really suggests that you be adventurous the tree is is a bit calmer than the other cards you know it tends to be wise and you know quiet and things and maybe with the with the ship and bear it's a suggestion a little bit to spice things up Gemini so while you're growing and you're on the right path and you know you know what you're building on it's still a good idea to you know be a little bit more adventurous uh, possibly look at things a little bit differently and then the woman key and stork is lovely with this person she could be bringing you some lovely ideas she could be offering you the green light opening up an opportunity here really any way you look at these cards they are great for um, solutions exciting projects new opportunities really there is an idea here of unlocking potential unlocking doors and opening up to opportunities so this is a really exciting month for you Gemini it's busy uh, it's interactive it's social um, it's uh, adventurous you could really discover a lot and do a lot in this month uh, put your mind to it and be open to what these experiences bring be a good team player be friendly uh, you know be um, be willing to have conversations and also be willing to take initiative to pick things up and get in touch with people i'm very sure that you're going to find that it returns lots of uh, good things to you and good ideas and new opportunities so a lovely set of cards uh, Gemini for January lots of things going on here let me know what you end up making of all of this what are all of these things you're busy with what are those opportunities you're about to walk into i'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments as always gemini thank you for watching and until next time take good care of yourself hello taurus welcome back to the channel and thank you as always for tuning back in 
If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Le Normand Reader. And today, Taurus, we are looking at your January forecast uh, in 2023. If you didn't watch your 2023 annual Astro Clock, I suggest you do that so you have the big picture of your year ahead of you. And uh, you can look at the monthly forecasts within this context. And so these three cards, Taurus, are from the January month of your Astro Clock. So what do we have here? We have the road, the key, and the whip. Now the whip is a challenging card, and um, as you know from the Astro Clock, all the cards figure in it. And so obviously both the challenging and the positive cards and all the other cards show up. For you, we see the challenge cards in, or this challenging card, in January. Now what is nice, Taurus, is that we have the key. And the key is precisely about problem solving. So when we see these two together, it looks like you are in for uh, finding a solution to a certain challenge or a certain problem that comes up. And the road is about the path ahead and when we see it earlier in the line with the key and whip after, it's like you have to go down this path where you are looking for a solution. Um, and so this can be an adventure, this can be a bit of a seeker kind of uh, situation where you're exploring options, you're thinking of solutions, uh, you're experimenting with different things and trying different possibilities. So it can be pretty adventurous in this way but it is also a focus on solving this problem now the key is a card of intelligence and resourcefulness and in the middle here I'm pretty sure you are going to be able to tackle this uh, problem now let us draw a nine card portrait to see what more insights we have about these three cards and also uh, other suggestions for your month of January okay Taurus here is your nine card portrait we do see the road uh, figuring in the cards like we do here and we have the snake this is interesting to me because i feel that with the road cards uh, this could be a bit of a winding path for your taurus you could be going a little bit around the situation you know before you land uh, on a solution your first card is the fish and the fish is about practical things it's about work and money and business it really brings in the more uh, material aspects of your life but it is also also a very good card for ambition, for wanting to be independent, uh, you know, for seeking, um, achieving financial goals and going after uh, your objectives. In the middle, we have the bird. The bird is a talkative card, but it comes into contrast with the snake. Uh, this can be a bit of a, an anxious uh, month for you. Uh, Taurus, it's probably because you know you're faced with this challenge and you're looking for a solution. Uh, so the bird here can feel like you're, uh, you know, like you're anxious to to find the solution uh, to overcome this. Uh, but the snake is going to ask you to be a bit more patient. Um, the fish and bird can actually bring up expenses or financial transactions, uh, maybe some errands that you're running in this area. Or it can, in fact, suggest like what we're seeing here, which I think is the more likely uh, interpretation that you need a solution. Now, the bird is really good with being talkative and conversational and verbal. And so it's very good with discussions and seeking answers, asking questions. But the snake is the opposite, actually. The snake is about being silent and calm and cautious. So I'm going to suggest that you balance out your inclination to talk a lot, maybe, this time around Taurus with a bit more calm and certainly before you ask questions negotiate or you know have these conversations uh, you want to think a little bit about them you want to think what exactly are they are they for so make sure that whatever conversations you're having questions you're asking negotiations that you could be uh, under, undertaking. You want to make sure that it's all tightly aligned with your goals because you don't want to spread yourself too thin and you don't want to be distracted with things uh, that don't matter. I'm also going to suggest, Doris, that when it comes to finances, money, expenses, maybe you're inclined to shop and buy things, the snake is going to ask you to temper a little bit your inclination here and to tighten a little bit. You sort of want to have a plan. You don't want to do anything on impulse. And this is really uh, the, the wisdom of the snake that comes into contrast with the bird. Now the rider, bird and cross is also a combination of communication. We have both the rider and bird and the rider is a, a more helpful card. It's also a messenger card. So there is the idea of news and communication and contact that comes into the picture as well. 
Now the cross adds a sense of importance here and I also think that maybe conversations don't go exactly as you have in mind Taurus. So it's important to be like aware and really the snake gives you this ability to listen. So yes, ask questions and have a conversation but also be really aware uh, about what is being said here. And I really think this ties into your key because the key is a very alert card. It is very intelligent. It has a lot of awareness. And so it sounds like with the rider and bird, there could be an important message here that comes through. And also you are possibly after that nugget of wisdom that's going to make a difference uh, for you and that's going to help you uh, tackle the challenges here. So really a balancing act when it comes to your communication, listening, asking, you know, having these conversations that you need to have in order to gather the information uh, that you're going to use to resolve this issue here. Now the fish road and cross, this could bring you to crossroads. So literally the road and cross is about crossroads and the cross is about decisions. And when I see this line here, I think this could be another relevant aspect for you this month where you need to make a choice. And it sounds like it's a tough choice, Taurus. It can be in relation to your finances, your work, but more generally, it has to do with your probably your day to day and the more tangible areas of your life. So it sounds like you're up against a tough choice this month. The bird uh, between the child and mountain, these two are an interesting combination. Uh, they point to an important chapter uh, that is ahead for you and this could be causing you a bit of anxiety, Taurus. Maybe you're a little bit nervous about what's to come and uh, it certainly aligns with this idea of being at crossroads and having to make an important decision. It sounds like you're at an important juncture that you need to make a choice. You could be um, facing up to some issues in this process and so it sounds like things are a little bit tense for you, Taurus. Now this is a, a nice combination here at the bottom, the rider, anchor, and snake. Um, so you are on the right track. Even if uh, you're feeling a bit anxious from this or you feel that it's tough to make the choice, you are on the right track, uh, Taurus. Another thing here is that you could be inclined to give up, okay? The snake might be uh, pulling you in another direction. You might want to just let this go and move on. The anchor suggests otherwise. The anchor suggests that you give this a bit more chances and that you stick with it a while longer because you could be, you know, at the tail end of this where you're going to land on a solution or the issues here are you're going to overcome them. So be a bit patient through this process. Try to temper, uh, you know, the, the tension or the anxiety you may have as you tackle this path, make these decisions, find solutions. You know, it, it sounds like you're a, little bit, you're a little bit stressed, but try to hang in there because uh, you could be in for, for a, an important new beginning here. Now the fish, child and rider is lovely for a new beginning. And this could be in relation to your money, your work, your business, uh, some sources of income, uh, other opportunities. And maybe that's part of what's causing you anxiety. You know, you are at the um, a doorstep of an important chapter here and maybe that is causing you a bit of nervousness. Uh, the road bird and anchor is another suggestion that you stick with the path. Again, like we said with the snake, you could be wanting to escape or wanting to not deal with this, uh, but I really think, uh, Taurus, that you want to give it at least a bit more of a chance uh, because you, you could surprise yourself that you find a solution when you didn't think that you can. The cross, mountain, and snake is another one of those important chapters unfolding. The cross and mountain is a bit like the child and mountain where there is an important chapter that is unfolding for you. It could be making you a bit nervous. What's interesting about the snake here is that with the mountain, it points to getting around an obstacle. It can, it's, it's not direct, it's like roundabout. And it can also mean going around someone's back. Now I'm not seeing a people element here, so it's probably not about that. But this idea of an indirect route could be at play. Um, so it is a bit of a, a tricky transition for you, Taurus. Uh, there are changes, there are um, choices, you are at uh, a new beginning here and there can be some challenges that you're overcoming, but you've got what it takes to overcome them. It, it just feels like there's a few th 
few me moving parts here and that could be causing uh, you know the, the stress and also you could be wanting to give up on this and just you know throw it behind you and move on uh, but I think that you need to give it a bit more of a chance and to stick with it at least a while longer uh, and you will find a way around it and you are going to move into this important uh, new beginning this can be a pretty good opportunity by the way Taurus so you want to you know hang in there and give it a bit more time give it a bit more thought you know dig into it a little bit more and you are most probably going to come out with a good solution so let me know what you make of these ideas Taurus leave me your thoughts and comments uh, let me know what the what the fish mainly was for you was it about uh, income or some project or was it about your ambitions in a broader uh, sense and what was this issue that you you might you were going to give up on or at least that I'm suggesting that you don't give up on for the time being I'd love your thoughts and your comments about these different ideas so leave me a few so thank you as always for tuning in Taurus very best of luck with the month and until next time take very good care of yourself Hello Aries, welcome back to the channel and thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader and today Aries we are doing your January forecast. If you didn't watch your 2023 Astro Clock, I suggest you do that. That way you'll have the big picture of the year and this reading we are focusing on January. And these three cards are from your Astro Clock for the month of January. So what do we have here Aries? Obviously we have a relationship with the woman in the middle but we also have the ring so clearly bringing someone into the picture and the tower can suggest that this is someone you've known a long time it can be someone older and it can be someone from the past uh, the the tower on this side with the ring suggests that this is a supportive and trustworthy relationship it sounds like this is someone you can rely on or you can go to for support and she might also be someone that you trust in terms of judgment or her opinion. You know, she might be specialized and experienced and so you might want to get in touch with her or otherwise interact with her to get her input. So let's put these cards aside and let's draw a nine card portrait. We've got Titanius cards and we're gonna draw more insights on these three cards as well as see what other suggestions come through for you for January. Okay, Aries, so these are some lovely cards, what we're seeing here for you. We've got the flowers and the star and the beautiful key and the moon in the middle. We're really seeing the potential of achieving some goals, of getting your wishes materialized, finding solutions, coming to positive conclusions. Uh, they're really nice cards all around. I am seeing the dog for you here as your first card and as your first card the dog advises you to be friendly, uh, to be a good team player and supportive. The moon in the middle can actually point to an offer and I have to say Aries like with the ring and tower you could be in for some kind of commitment. Possibly this woman is bringing the offer. With the star on the other side of the moon, it could be something that you really want. So again, this idea of getting what you want or achieving a wish. It's also possible, Aries, that with the moon and star and the moon and garden, you could be appreciated or well regarded, you could be popular, you know, or honored in some way or another. And so it can feel like a time when you're in the spotlight, that is possible. Uh, so these are some really nice cards. The house, moon and clouds, the clouds, it's a little bit tricky. It can bring a bit of tension or some things that are unclear. And with the moon, it can suggest the darker side of the moon. So there can be some tensions here or some, you know, doubts. But I feel that because of the house, which is also a card of place and of space, a bit like the garden, except it's a bit more private, I wonder if there could be some chatter or some talk and I think this could come in light of your success and your you know the fact that you're in the spotlight so you could you know have a few insecurities about this uh, there can be others who are talking about this and maybe it's causing you to you know to worry about some things but in general I feel that the cards are really 
uh, positive, so I don't think that this has too much of an implication. You might also want to, Aries, find out how people feel about you. Maybe you're putting something out there and so you want some feedback. So it's a really good time to have uh, constructive discussions in these ways. Um, the uh, moon and house can also point to an invitation. So again, the moon is a card of offers and proposals, and in different combinations, we see that it expresses uh, this essence. And so with the clouds here, you could be thinking about you know, whether you accept this or not. And it's certainly a good idea uh, not to jump to something, but instead to think things through. And we'll see here that you will uh, come to the right conclusion for you. Now the dog garden and clouds is again being in this environment and like I suggested with the clouds and house we have the clouds and garden. So again the idea of an environment, of a space, of a place that you're part of, uh, that you're in and with the clouds there can be some tension here and it's really my impression because of all of these good cards around you that there can be possibly envy or you know some talk and some tension in these ways now i'm not seeing the envy card proper which would be the snake but still the clouds you know it's a little bit tense it can't cause uh, these things and and again like i was suggesting um aries you might want to you know you want to be a good team player so this is coming together at the table having conversations if this is about problem solving which it can be with the key uh, you know do your part and be a good team player now the fish moon and key is really great for all around offers success solutions opening doors opportunities and when it comes to money it's very good you could be getting a new source of income or additional income or a bonus there is a sense of recognition and appreciation and there is also a very clear um, idea of achieving your goals and being successful uh, at these goals so really good with money ambitions and really all around the house flowers and star is lovely this too is a combination of success it's really good for healing and forgiveness uh, for reconnecting uh, you know for you know the the positive energy is back into play and obviously with this star we could be looking at wish fulfillment so again you know with the house which can be about home and family but really because of the garden and other cards i think it's a bit broader than that we're seeing that you're popular that you're successful what you offer is well received there's a lot of success here and also i have to say aries it could be a good time for celebration you could be partying you know, possibly this is coming through in the second column. Uh, you know, you could be celebrating in someone's home. There could be a party, a birthday, uh, you know, things like that. So definitely a good time uh, for celebrating your success, other people's success, uh, you know, just celebrating these, uh, these wonderful times. The dog, fish, and house can point to your colleagues on the job. It can also point to customers. Um, it can suggest you know, people you interact with for your money, your work, other uh, aspects of your practical life. And uh, I have to say, Aries, if you're looking to start a business or to capitalize on your hobbies or to do something from home, uh, that could really be good for you. We could also be looking at property, by the way. We have a few cards uh, that suggest this. So if you're looking at real estate investments and things like that, buying, selling, maybe um, t getting some advantage with regards to your rent, you know, or other, uh, you know, other aspects of your living situation here, they can work out really well. And in this sense, we have the support of this person here. Um, I think this is someone who could be a higher up or someone of influence, certainly someone of experience whom you can rely on for good information, good feedback, and she could also be the one who supports you with this offer and your, your success. The garden, moon, and flowers is lovely for appreciation, honors, recognition, uh, like we suggested with the star and moon, star and flowers, we've got them in here as well. And also, like I said, this could be a party or going out with people, celebrating, very much a good time for this this month. 
Now the clouds and key is the combination of brainstorming and finding solutions. And with the star, obviously you find a solution. So I felt that there could be, um, there could be a, a phase or a piece within this month that has to do around problem solving with others, uh, maybe with the team like we saw in the second diagonal. You know, it sounds like you're getting together with people to find a solution, to talk through things, to brainstorm, you know, so it could be really active and engaging this month. And certainly you want to be part of that because the dog covers you, Aries. And with the star, we see that you land on a positive solution. There's a good sense of collaboration. You're appreciated by those around you and probably by someone else who's maybe, uh, you know, a bit of a higher up here. Uh, so this is great for you. It sounds like, um, it sounds like this is an opportunity for you Aries to shine, you know, to really show what you're made of, to contribute really positively, to get really good feedback and to sort of like, you know, take up like a position within this environment. So a very good time for showing your talents, contributing, sharing your ideas, um, and, you know, really being part of a, a, a team or a community so you can, you know, collaborate with others and also contribute, like we said. So very beautiful cards, really nice for your sense of success and fulfillment. And I have to say, if it's purely social, you know, if it's about being with friends, you know, it's great. You might want to go out and enjoy some good times, uh, maybe go to a few parties, go to people's places or, you know, invite them over. It's really a good month for celebration. And there can be one specific or a few one-on-one -on -one relationships also that uh, come through for you this month who support you in uh, more than one way. So overall, Aries, this is a social month, whether it is uh, in your social fun life or at work or in business. Um, the energies are great across the board, a great month for collaboration and success and also for showing uh, and sharing. Let me know what you make of these ideas, Aries. I'm really looking forward to your comments. Very best of luck with the month. And as always, until next time, thank you for watching and take very good care of yourself.